welcome to Easter dinner. This is my seasoned chicken legs that we're going to put in the oven to barbecue. And now I have my cabbage that I washed and I cut up as small as you like. I kind of cut it up real small. This is like a small cabbage, but it was just enough for the family for today. And let's talk about these um short beef ribs. Man, these ribs had so much fat on them that it was so crazy, guys. Um, so what I went and did is that I just cut off all the fat. Just cut all the fat off these beef ribs. It was just too much on here. It's like, you know, when you know you do Walmart and the grocery delivery people, they um do it for you. They pick up your meats, but they I don't think they really look at, you know, your meats real well. So that was all bone right there. And then I cut off all that. And look at this fat on here. That's a lot of fat on here. So I know having some fat on meat is really good, but not that much. This is entirely too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to go ahead and um, chop all this fat off. Look at that. That's just a whole lot of fat. It's like you pay, this is stuff by the ounces. So you have to, you know, you be paying for this stuff by the weight and it's just so much fat on here. And so we're just going to get a lot of that fat off. I'm going to try my best not to um, cut into the meat. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's so much fat. So guys, let's sit back and relax. And I'm going to go ahead and um, cut all this fat as much as I could get off of these um, short ribs. Because like I said, they had meat on there, but it was just so much fat covering them. Once they cook, they're going to really shrink, and you really get to see that bone is going to protrude out, and it's really going to shrink up. But when it do that, I just don't want too much of that on there. Yeah, that it's just it's too much, a whole lot of nothing, nothing. Okay, guys, this is all the fat I got off all of those ribs. All of them had a little bit of fat on them, more than what need, was needed. So I just washed them and cleaned them again, and then I'm going in with my house seasoning. I try. I typically, when I'm cooking a lot of food, I typically make a bowl of seasoning so I don't have to be picking up each seed of seasoning, you know, one by one. So this is my house seasoning I'm going in with. Um, like I said, these um beef ribs. They had a lot of fat, and they had it had just enough meat. I would like that they were a little bit more meatier. And yes, I'm only using this seasoning. I'm going to with my hands and touching my meat because I'm only using this seasoning on these ribs. So these seasonings to pick um, strictly for these ribs. So they won't this season won't be used on anything else. I'll end up making more seasoning for the rest of my food. But yeah, so I'm going in. We're gonna season them and flip them around really well and get as much. This is beef. So, you know, you want to make sure you get enough season on it. It's, it's my house season. I don't use any really too much salt or any salt at all. And this is a more like a lot of powder and complete and things like that. I just mixed up. We're going to go ahead and mix our uh, ribs all together. And, you know, if they look this good, you know, they season. You can see the color disoration. You know that they are seasoned. There's enough season on there. So what we're about to do now, guys, we're about to... um. Just let to sit these to the side because I want to make sure that they get room temperature before we go and sear them on the stove. Because um, th these are going to be braised ribs with no barbecue sauce cooked on top of the stove because I just want to use that same pan that I have for nothing but flavor. So let's go put some grease in the pan and um, get the pan nice and hot so that we can go ahead and get a nice, um, nice color on these ribs okay so my pan this is my pan that i'm using and i'm gonna go ahead and place the ribs in that grease i'm not gonna overcrowd the pan but the pan is big enough so that i could get maybe three to four maybe five in here i think i'll get five in here um and you're gonna go down meat side first i'm not i'm gonna have the bone side up i'm going down meat side first um, to get the ribs in there to get them nice and seared and when you do this guys just let them sit like on a high temperature not that high you don't want them to burn but most certainly watch it but um let them sit that was my cabbage over there my cabbage over there cooking that cabbage cooked really really fast i got it in and got it done so just let it sit all right so this is what it should look like when we said we want to um Sear one side of your meat. Look at that. That's what you want it to look like. 
that's that's what I'm going for. And so I'm gonna go ahead and flip them all over. But that's the look. And if you see one or two that's not completely sealed, let it sit a little bit more longer. But yeah, but that's the look that we're going for. That's how I have nine in total. So that's the look that we're going for right there. Look amazing. Okay. There they go. We are finishing up. I think at this point, I'm about to remove them. This was my last batch. Um, again, I had nine in total. And all of that goodness, all that grease, all the season, all that flavor, we're going to be using that. That's why I didn't want to switch pans out or put it in an aluminum pan to put it in the oven. I had done my braised ribs on top of the stove. I had seen video with people doing them on top of the stove and some people doing them in the oven. Remember, your kitchen your way, my kitchen my way, whatever fits for you. I don't have my Dutch oven, but I would have had my Dutch oven pot. I most definitely would have took all that goodness and stuck it in the oven. But um, here we go with some onions. Um, I don't have yellow onions. I don't have a sweet onion. I have what I had in the refrigerator. So we're using this red onion that I diced up. It's like a half of an onion that I use. You know, you could use a whole onion if you like. And what I'm going to do is let these onions saute. And um, all that and from the seasoning, from the uh, ribs and the olive oil, because I did use olive oil. This is not vegetable. I meant to tell you guys that. And um, I'm just letting it all saute. It means that letting these um, onions get a little soft. So we're going to cook them until they get a little soft. And after they get that little softness to them, I'm going to go in with some garlic. But um, I think I'm going to go in with my garlic or my carrots first. But we're going to let these cook. So I'm going to go in with my uh -huh. carrots. So after the onions got really soft the way I, I wanted them, I let them cook. I threw the carrots in there. I use baby carrots. carrots. That's I what I nice had on my... hand. A nice they handful. So but with this recipe, people... You want to use like um, celery, two, um, two sticks of carrots, um, two, up, three cloves of, of um, fresh garlic, and, and some onion. Well, I didn't have any celery, so I actually just used the carrots, the red onion, and at this point, I'm about to put in some minced, um, some minced garlic, and it's gonna be like maybe two teaspoons, and two teaspoons could be anywhere between two to three cloves of chopped fresh garlic and i'm gonna put that in there and i'm gonna get it all stirred up now the stove is not as high as it was when i was um searing off those um ribs i did turn it down some because again i wanted those vegetables to come to a softness but not too soft the carrots still have a crunch in them when i go add in my meat and my broth and stuff so yeah so i put in the um Minced, the minced garlic and I'm just stirring it up and everything. Now I'm going in with the seasoning. I had to make some more seasoning. Um, so this is another batch of my seasoning for my um, vegetables because you want to season your vegetable too. You want everything to be seasoned. You know, cooking is all about flavor and helping bring out that natural taste with your seasoning. So this is tomato paste. I'm going in with some tomato paste. It's going to give it that dark, vibrant look that we're looking for. And I'm going in with maybe a tablespoon of tomato paste. I love this tomato paste so you could go back in the refrigerator and you could keep it and you don't have to keep, you know, the can. I only needed a tablespoon. And with the can, I would, you know, it went to waste. So um, I'm going to stir in my tomato paste. And what tomato paste is going to do, it's going to bring it all together. It's going to give it a kind of thought thickness a real dark thickness a dark look that i'm looking for and make it kind of thick so after i stir it i'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then go back and stir it again so that i'm getting all that seasoning all that flavor everything i want from the bottom of this pan i want to transfer it into the vegetables to those onions and to those carrots again at this point this is where you're going to have your carrots your onions your celery your mint scarlet this is the point where you will have all of that here i'm missing everything but the celery okay but if you want celery make sure you add it at that point is when you're gonna be cooking all them vegetables up together now it's looking how i let it sit see how thick that is looking how thick it got that's because of that tomato paste you see the change you're rich in the change in color that's because of that tomato paste so you gotta have that tablespoon of tomato paste to go in here now i'm about to go in with a whole box of beef broth i'm going to use one whole box and then i'm going to use some of another box but i'm going to pull the broth in first and then i'm going to submerge my um ribs into this because this pan is big 
But I want to make sure that before I add the other thing of broth, I don't want to overflow the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and add my ribs to this pan. And then once I add all the ribs, I'm not going to finish stirring. Yes, I'm about to add in some oregano too, guys. The final touch, the final seasoning that I'm adding to this is oregano, maybe a tablespoon oregano you know the big spoon so that's like a tablespoon of oregano that i'm added to this is going to help give it this is another herb another spice that's going to help give it um a flavor a good flavor so we're going to stir this all up now i'm about to add in my meat my short ribs and that cabbage is still cooking at this point so i'm adding my short ribs. i was trying to get that camera adjusted y'all <laughs> and i'm doing one day at one one rib at a time i'm not throwing them in there i'm not pouring them in there because i like i said i know this pan has to be adjusted for these ribs to go in there so i'm just going to be moving them all about and if you guys wonder why i'm doing a voiceover because i started in this kitchen around about 12 30 at the church 12 30 12 45 at the church and the family was getting ready for all my young men in my house is getting ready for work and you know they was on xboxes they were playing music they were talking back and forth from each other um being loud and you know do what you do and when you're getting ready for work. See, I added all those juices in there and I barely had enough room to get those short ribs in there, but they got in there. So I'm just organizing them, moving them around, shuffling them around, trying to get them all down in there the proper way. Now I'm going to take my second thing of um, beef broth and I'm going to pour that on top, but slightly, not to over, not to overfill the pan because when this get the simmering on low, it's going to have a top on it. You don't want, um, you don't want a messy stove. You don't want this to bubble everywhere. So I'm just going in with the second box of beef broth, just enough so I can get a good, um, feel. I want to submerge these ribs, just enough. So I think this was good right here. So at this point, I'm going to put my top on it and I turned the stove down on low. Once I add, add my thyme leaves, mm -hmm, there you go. I put some thyme in there, a bushel of thyme. Again, another herb to help enhance the flavor. And right here, I got a little steaming hole. So it's going to be, it's going to let loose all that steam that need to be let loose with this. And we're going to let this cook. I'm not going to touch this much. We're going to let this simmer do its thing for the next three hours. Now, guys, I'm going in with my potato salad. Again, this is an Easter blog. This is not even like a recipe. This is like what I cook for Easter. A lot of these recipes just like you guys seen me do before. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. You know, sit back and relax and enjoy and see what I did on Easter um, Sunday. Now, this is my potato salad. I used about maybe eight to nine potatoes in this potato salad. And I um, chopped them up before I got on camera. And what I always do, and when I do give a recipe and I tell people, season your um, potatoes. Before you add in all the condiments, the mayonnaise, the mustard, relish, and all that stuff, season your potatoes. Because if you buy into a potato and they ain't got no mayonnaise or nothing on it, you want to make sure that that potato is very seasoned. Even a lot of people, if you pre-peel your potatoes and then dice them, you can actually boil them in a little bit of chicken broth or add a little bit of chicken season to them. But I typically boil mine with the skin on, then I peel. Um, I have more control on how soft they get versus if I pre-dice them and boil them, I tend to over, I tend to over boil them. The next thing you know, I might have some mashed potatoes, y'all. So yeah, so I'm just stirring my seasoning up um, and always start off with a little not a lot because when you're cooking food you can always add extra but once you get a whole bunch of seasoning in there and it's too much it's oversaturated it maybe too bit salty too much garlic too much that you can't take it away so add a little at a time and i'm, <laughs> I'm just throwing my eggs in there uh i'll you <laughs> but yeah i did like maybe eight eggs one egg to a potato one thing about me and potato salad i love an eggy potato salad some people may not i see some people do like four eggs and a potato salad call it a day i grew up i love an eggy potato salad so uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and chop my eggs up. Yes, I do use my hands when chopping up my eggs.
legs. I find it more convenient for me that way, more easy for me that way. Because one, I do have arthritis. When I hold stuff a certain way and dice things a certain way, it will cramp up my hands. And this day, when I'm making these long meals like that, I got to be very cautious and very aware of my hand gestures on how I move and what I do to them to um, prevent them from locking up on me when my hands get overworked from cooking. That's why I don't do a lot. That's why I don't cater because of the arthritis in my hands because um, it doesn't allow me to do a lot of stirring and mixing and things like that before my hands will really lock up. Now, if you know, you know. So, yeah, so I just use my hands to really um get in there and get these eggs going. You know, they'll be a little bigger. Sometimes I do them a little smaller, but um most definitely I use my hands. So what I'm doing now is I'm just stirring them eggs up in the seasoned potatoes. So I want to get the eggs incorporated. I want to get more of that season incorporated. And I just want to get it all stirred up. Now, I see some extra big pieces while I'm trying to stir. And I'm just going in and chopping them up with my hand. Remember, I'm feeding my family. If I was feeding your family, if you was getting a dish from me, I do use universal precaution, meaning that I do wear gloves when I'm cooking for others. But right now, it's my kitchen. It's my family. And they already know how we get down. You know, so long as your hands is washed and you doing what you're supposed to do, this is the way I work in my kitchen. So I'm chopping up the potatoes. I told you, so I like small potatoes. Even though I chopped them, guys, I like small potatoes. Not small to where they smushy, but just small enough, you know, be like, yeah. Okay, so I'm going in with my mustard. Now, again, a video blog. I can't tell you how much mustard I put in here. Y'all, I just be squeezing to the gods tell me to stop. These are the food gods, okay? So I could say it'd be about three teaspoons of mustard. It could be about two teaspoons. But the way that zigzagging going, I don't know. I use sweet relish. I used the whole thing that was in there, about a half a cup, juice and all. Because the juices, that pickle juice is giving something, you know, be having something going on. And I use miracle, not miracle whip, mayonnaise. My mother used to be miracle whip. I'm mean, thinking about my mom. She loves miracle on the potato salad. But we go for mayonnaise. You see, I'm only using two teas, two tape, two spoons. Now, these two spoons may be about. Or did I use two spoons and a half? I really can't tell. I think I just used two spoons, though. Because I like my potato salad more on a dry side. Because when I do use my sweet relish, I don't drain the juice off. I used to back in the day. But I stopped draining the juice off because I realized if I stopped using that much that much um, mayonnaise, I wouldn't have to drain the juice off the um, the potato salad. Because in the day, I had to drain the juice off because potato salad would tend... Um, when you put it in the refrigerator and cover it up, you wake up the next day, it will sometimes have a little bit of um, condensation in it, some water at the bottom. And that's because of all the um, mayonnaise and relish. But then I learned that don't squeeze off your, um, your relish. Keep the juice of your relish. Just use less mayonnaise. And I like that dry consistency um, with this. So I think I did really good with this. Um, them two scoops of uh, um, mayonnaise was just right. So y'all, I'm not saying this potato salad was hitting. It was hitting, okay? No, you don't see no green peppers. You don't see no onions. You don't need no celery. Because I was cooking this meal and I want some. And I don't eat all of that in my potato salad. But sometimes when I don't want potato salad, I will give that to the family and most definitely when i'm cooking for an event or a barbecue i add a little bit of onion a little bit of um a little bit of uh, green peppers in it, you know, just to elevate it. And yeah, she put sugar in it, about two teaspoons. Don't come from any comments. You know, you maybe tell the side, you know what you know what I'm doing. If you know, you know, okay. And so I'm stirring it up and um yeah. It came out good. I had just enough seasoning. I didn't have to put any more um, seasoning in this. It didn't need any more mayonnaise. It was at the right consistency. As far as with the mayonnaise, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't all soupy and stuff. My mom, <laughs> bless her heart, she would make some soupy potato salad. But she also learned over the years, too. I mean, cooking is a learning curve. Look at me. I'm greedy. I'm going in. But the smells and everything, look, my bread didn't fail. I had to taste it. God, that was so good. Yes, baby. She did that. <laughs> I don't 
don't know why, even when I cook to this day, I still surprise myself when I'm cooking, you know, that um, the food really tastes good. Sometimes, I guess I don't have that much confidence. I don't know why I don't have that much confidence when it comes to my food, because sometimes stuff to me could sometimes be a hit and miss, but I cook the same food and, you know, don't give up on it. Um, if you make potato salad, it don't come out all the time, don't give up on it. Any recipe that you make and sometimes it don't come out right, don't give up on it. Because eventually, the more you make it, the more you, um, you'll perfect it. So, and that's what I do here with all my dishes, like I did with biscuits. The more I make it, don't give up on the recipe, the you know, the more I perfect it. And then it gets to where I need to get. That potato salad look good, y'all. It came out good. I'm telling you, y'all will like this. This is called, like... I call this like an egg potato salad because I put a lot of eggs in it. There's no type of um, onions, peppers, or celery, no vegetables in it. To me, this is a simple, yes, I'm going in with another fork. I'm not using the same fork because now that I just blend it all up together, I just want to taste it again because I stirred it up some more. And I didn't add any more. I think I was on point with the seasons this time. I just put just enough season to get it to where it need to be. And you know I called Jackson in, but he didn't want to be on camera. He was like, Mom, for real? He was like, this potato salad tastes so good. So, yes, I'm about to get all that off that spoon. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> this would be another reason why you don't eat afterwards because you be tasting. As a cook, you have to taste your food. You got to because you ain't trying to put out some bland, non-seasoned, non-tasting food to nobody because of your family or your friend or foe. You want everything to come out tasting really, really good. So this potato salad is ready, y'all. I had to get my top. Yes, I was in my pajamas. It was a Sunday. I did my church services by Zoom. I got, you know, I got the word in with the Lord. And and I got in here and got to cooking. Um, all the young men in my house is gone to work. I'm adding that paprika on there, y'all. You know, for the decorations. And I was comfortable. I was in my zone. I was in my zone. My sister was just coming to pick up and sit for a while, bringing my niece who I haven't seen in a long time. So I was just in my zone, and, yeah, I was cleaning up as I go. So when at the end, when I get finished, honey, because I'm the only person to be doing dishes. So, yeah. So at the end, when I get finished, I'm not going to have a sink full of dishes. That's not going to happen over here, and not today. But this potato salad came out good. Um, one of my sons, he like warm potato salad, but I'm sorry, boo. It's going in the um, refrigerator. So I'm going to put this top. I love my Tupperware bowls. I got to give me some more Tupperware stuff with tops. It made putting food up so easy um, this day. Um, in the refrigerator we go. Mm-hmm. This is my water for my macaroni. It's all that flavor, all that seasoning, baby. That's that chicken seasoning. Man, remember, don't make no plain elbow noodles, Okay. If you don't get no cheese, you want some flavor. Look at that. When I say them things was tender, look at that, y'all. The things came out good, okay? And that's my cabbage. I transferred it out the other pot into the small pot because, you know, cabbage will shrink. But we had enough cabbage, you know, even had some leftovers. This is all the seasonings that I'm using in my um in my cheese sauce. So I am making my cheese sauce, and it got... um. Mozzarella, the rest of the cheese sauce with all that season I'm stirring up. Velveeta's, Kobe Jack, mozzarella. That's what's all in here with two cans of, um, well, a can and a half of evaporated milk. And right here to my uh, macaroni noodles, I have, um, before I pulled it in, I had some block cheese that I cut up. I had a bag of Mexican cheese that I put in here. And then I have a stick of unsalted butter. And I'm just going to stir all this. So I put all that sauce in here. Everything. Because, you know, you want a cheesy mac and cheese. You want to make sure every noodles get what it's supposed to get. So, at this point, I'm about to go ahead. And um, at this point, y'all... This one, I almost lost it <laughs> with the hand. I mean, this was the second time in the day that my hand, my right hand, that's the one that locks up the most because um, that's the one I use the most because I'm right-handed, so I do a lot of stirring and cooking with it. Um, it tried me. It really tried me, y'all, but I got her under control. I, I gripped the spoon in a different type of way because usually when I'm making macaroni, someone home with me, I'll get them to stir the macaroni up for me. 
um, because I know you have to really grip that spoon because it gets heavy. And when you pull that cheese sauce and the noodles and stuff, it gets heavy and you really want to be able to get all that cheese incorporated. So I typically have someone to stir those noodles and that macaroni up for me. But um, this day I had to do it myself. And um, so I took my time with it. Like I said, they try to get me. They try to get try to get me with the um, but I took control and just stood back. I stopped. I rubbed my hands and then I went back again. Now I'm putting some sour cream in my macaroni. Now you know you know, you know you got to put sour cream in the macaroni. So that's what I'm doing. I had two things of sour cream, a half in each one. So I put about a cup of sour cream. Cause see, this is the size pot. This is the size pot of macaroni that you make for barbecues that I make for barbecue. This is the side pot that I make for um, family reunions and a family get together. For the barbecues we give, I used to make about, me and my mom used to make two of these. And it'd be like, it is what it is. And, um, but we, I had what, nine people eating off this Thanksgiving? Mm, I said Thanksgiving. Y'all, let's not talk that up because you know it'll be around the corner again. Oh, yes. Um, this Easter dinner, I was feeding about nine people. So I said, you know what? And these nine people, you know, macaroni is like a staple. I'm trying to get y'all a good overall look. And look all that sour cream. Just stir it up, get it all combined up in there. And um, this would be more than enough. It was just me and my family. I didn't invite nobody to come over to get plates. I had four extra people to get a plate off this. Cheese ready for is um, you know, cheese on top. I got some Kobe Jack that I'm about to put on top of my macaroni and cheese. There, I never met anybody who never layered their macaroni and cheese with cheese. I'm having trouble getting my pack open. Oh, there it is. So, yeah, so I'm just layering my macaroni and cheese uh, with an eight ounce pack of Kobe Jack. Um, I'm going to use all this because I like my cheese, you know, corner to corner to the middle of the size and everything like that. And this is a big macaroni and cheese because I'm doing a family of nine. So we most definitely will have some um, leftovers and stuff. But yeah, if y'all hear my granddaughter, this is the next day and I'm doing a voiceover with my granddaughter just got here. Shut the door. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Man, yeah, so let me get, um, I'm getting all this cheese up on here again. Like I said, I am using this whole pack of um, a cheese because, you know, they just like, the family like the cheese all on it. But, yeah, she's almost ready to go in the oven. I'm going to let her cook. I got my oven set. I'm going to cook my oven today like on 375. So everything been cooking like on 375. So she's going to go on 375 in the oven until she get pretty golden brown and ready to come out. But yeah, so the mac and cheese is done. And remember, this is a food vlog, not a recipe. So I didn't really go step by step on everything that I used um, for my mac and cheese. Okay, now I have my yams right here. Now the yams, I didn't do um, uh, fresh yams. I wasn't doing all that. Um, I went in and I just did some four cans of um, canned yams and I drained the juice off of them. And then all I did was um, take a knife and chop them up and got them all in the pan. So now I'm sprinkling some cinnamon on top. Um, I did make a candy sauce, guys. There is a candy sauce involved in this. Um, in my candy sauce that's coming, I just use um, a stick of unsalted butter, a pinch of salt, um, some white sugar, some brown sugar, some of my grandma jockey sweet potato pie mix. Even though I'm about to put a little bit on the yams, just a little bit because I just love the flavor that it gives. And it's not just for pie mix. And then I added some syrup and some vanilla into the um, candy sauce. And I let it all melt down, cook together. And again, just a hint. A sweet potato pie mix I'm putting on the potatoes because I already have some in that candy sauce as well. But I just like the way that nutmeg, ginger, and all that stuff comes together. And that's why I say this mix is for more than just pies. It makes your sweet potatoes taste so amazing. So here I come now. The candy sauce is melted. Now I'm about to pull. Yes, this is enough. I should have made this a little bit more, um, but this it did, it did what it needed to do. You know, you want your yams... Um, candy but not overly sweet so i think they came out they were really good the air hey i had no complaints in the household i had no complaints with my sister in there they said everything was good and so yes yeah, so everything came out good i just took my time y'all i just took my time sat down and do what i do 
you know, listening to music and everybody was getting ready for work. Like I said, I got in this kitchen at around about 12 something, a little bit after church, and I was in this kitchen until my sister left at 7.30, but I was finished cooking like at 6.15. So I was in this kitchen for almost six hours, seven hours, y'all. Probably went to the bathroom maybe once. The whole time's in here, yup. Yeah. So, yeah, and look at those right there. When I say these things are cooking and they came out good, they are cooking and they came out good. But since, you know, I had a small pan, I'm just moving around just a little bit so that uh, everybody can have their fair share. I want to make sure they all cook up nice and tender um, with these. Now, I didn't do the gravy portion of that because we don't have mashed potatoes. Now, this is what we got. We got the barbecue chicken. The roasted chicken, the barbecue chicken, the roasted chicken. That's already done. My sweet potato cornbread, like I said, it's a little bit burnt to the edges because I put the sweet potatoes and the cornbread in at the same time on the top shelf. So I had the macaroni and cheese on the bottom shelf. Oh, that's why I want to get a house one day with two stoves so I could um, get everything in the way it's supposed to. And anytime you put anything to the edge and they share a shelf with each other in the oven, it's going to tend to cook a little faster around the edges and stuff. So that's what happened. Like if you put the cakes and then it'll be burnt at the edges because it's closer to the inside, the closest up to the wall of the oven. So it cook a little fast. So let's go through this menu. They're going to mac and cheese. It came out so good, y'all. And that's the only pan in my sink. I washed and did. This is where I was going. I was not playing. And look at these braised ribs, honey. They were tender. They melted in their mouth. They said they were so good. I got my cabbage. Mm-hmm. And then this back here. Oh, yeah. This is the chicken. I got that chicken right there, and I got that barbecue chicken right there. Yeah, and then we got the yams over here. They came out good, and we got the potato salad. They were in here ready to make plates. My sister showed up with the ice for me. I made me a drink because at the end of the day, after I did what I do, been in this kitchen for all these hours, Yes, been in this kitchen for all these hours. Mrs. came through with a big old cup of ice for me for 7-Eleven. Your girl pulled herself some Malibu and some pineapple juice. One of my signature favorite go-to drinks. And I made my sister one. And we toast to um <laughs> we toast to Easter and family. And my niece was there and love and everything. And yeah, and everything just hit on point. I'm so glad that everybody enjoyed the food. Again, once everybody got home, everybody called me, told me how good the food was. And and, and I did get a thank you. So yeah, I said, don't worry about it. I'll see y'all Thanksgiving. <laughs> but the drink, y'all, the drink was on point. Happy Easter. The cabbage tastes good to you. Mm -hmm. To you sucking that cabbage up. She said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Easter, y'all. I know I look a hot mess. This is how I was cooking in my house. I ain't having no company. All my sons are at work. My sister just came pick up her plate for her son and my niece and Brandon to take the Brandon. And at the end, I got me some Malibu pineapple juice made my sister drink too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are points on you. Okay. You did a good job. You did good. <laughs> or not to eat it, don't know. You did good. Yeah, because I y'all tend have to taste my cabbage because I don't eat cabbage and I just make it. So every time I make cabbage, my mother used to be my cabbage and my green taster, but she's not with us. So mm -hmm. I be having my sons and everybody at work. Mm -hmm. So I told Tim, when you come, you gotta taste my cabbage to see if you need any more mm -hmm. seasoning or anything. Cause I just put I been my little my house seasoning. How my house seasoning blend with my um Butter and sugar, and you know, but my mother she used to do like the fat. Y'all know that fat that was on that. Um, did I all that fat I cut off those braised ribs? About right here. Okay, all the fat I know? put right behind you on the braised ribs. My mother would have fried that up, washed it, dried it, fried that fat, and probably threw it in her cabbage. I don't know. I'm just saying. I ain't going to put that on you, mama, because I don't think you would like that type of fat. But I was just thinking, you, my mother loved fat back in her cabbage. So, y'all, I'm going to show y'all a plate. I'm going to make me a plate because I am so tired. So I had all, oh, I had to put my cornbread back in the oven because by me having all, everything cooking, I had like three it's things. It's not a shitty I'm sorry. <laughs> by me having three things cooking at one time, my cornbread was off to the edge and it got dark real quick on the edge, but it didn't get really done in the middle. So, I had to put okay. that back in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
the girl, you bad because you know time. Just take that piece of this. You sure? Yeah. I'm not trying to take all your money. Cause you know Tyreek. Yeah, that's it. And I gotta make Brandon I'm play. Right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here. Brandon, yeah, because Brandon made a play. He said, please give me some milk, uh, macaroni and cheese. I Ooh, said, yeah. Okay. All right, guys, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified. And happy Easter to everyone who celebrates. Get a little bit. We're gonna get a little bit. Dang, she, ain't, she didn't know we wanted to take the time. So this is our Sunday dinner. This is Brandon plate getting wrapped up going home. My sister take drop it off to Brandon. But this is Brandon plate. And this is the um yeah. This is what I made for Easter dinner. Yams, macaroni, potato salad, raised ribs, barbecue chicken, and cabbage. So bonus seat again. Happy Easter.